Yeah. We want to nail Nan down. Come on, y'all. Let's give a little love up yeah. here to Derek Weston Brown. All right, y'all. Good evening. Thanks again for having me here at Hot Topics. Appreciate it. So I'm going to leave all the explanation. I'm going to jump in some poems, and then we'll get to the interview. All right, so this first poem is called Bookstore Banter or What in the Heck Happened. I work in a bookstore, and uh, sometimes you get customers, and... Uh, some names have been changed to protect the innocent. <clears throat> it's done in two voices. Her. So like, I'm like looking for a book about this guy who did a really great thing and like changed a lot of people's lives, but I like don't know the author or the title. Can you like help me find it? Me. Could you give me more details? Her. Um, okay, he's like a doctor or some religious guy or an activist and he like got a lot of people together to like change some stuff that was like wrong or bad with society it happened like in ancient times you know like the 1960s me dr martin luther king jr her um no duh me okay uh gandhi paul roberson ralph nader howard zinn her no, no, no. Oh, wait, he did, like, do a lot of speeches, though. Me. Could it be Malcolm? Her. That's it, Malcolm 10. Me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, reading is fundamental. I'll say that. <laughs> All right, Um, this next piece is about... I think I'm of the generation, a lot of us of that generation before texting, you know, you had the four hour phone call. If you were calling somebody, you know, you'd be up late at night, you eat breakfast on the phone, lunch on the phone, end of the night, phone, you know, by the bed, you're still talking. So this is about texting and what I miss and what I, well, I'll just jump into it. It's called Context. <clears throat> Opens with a quote from Prince. How come you don't call me? There you go, anymore. Don't want my sentiment reduced to clickety-clack. Don't want my lust abbreviated. Don't want to see your smile illuminated by the aquarium glow of your smartphone. Don't want a 140-word limit. Shit, I already have haiku and tanka. Don't want those QWERTY relations. Don't want to decipher SMH, OMG, LMAO. Don't want backslash. Don't want XO, 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 XO. I want to hear you smile. Hear your sharp breath siphon through the holes of the receiver. Hear your voice plummet from the early evening giddy to late night husk. Want to hear you adjust in bed, breath filtered by a fluffed pillow. Want to hear running water, breaking dishes, traffic, background music, the hive humming drone of an AC unit under our voices, the kind of undercurrent you can't get from clickety-clack. Call me throwback, because I like conversation you got to put all the senses and your imagination into. Why neglect healthy ears for that clickety-clack? I need more, want more. Call me sometime. Yeah. So, yeah, just got to ask how many more I can keep going. All right. So, uh, back to D.C. D.C., of course, has like a large, a lot of larger cities, has a large population of people, you know, mentally ill, people who are dealing with so much stuff. You think about St. Elizabeth's and the such. And this poem is basically about working, working within the city and coming to contact with folks. And black folks... We had like a, a term for people, you know, who dealing with that stuff. Instead of saying crazy or anything else, we say, oh, they a little touched. So that's a polite way of saying it. So it's called touched. <clears throat> touched is the term I remember the most used for the folk people said were just a little out of their right mind. So kind it seemed to regulate their mental illness to an extra caress. At work, mixed in with the diners and book buyers, I meet them. Some looking for a quiet place to sit, eyes big as saucers, the whites amplified, their pupils dilated, dancing yokes. The hum is in their head or in their veins as they try to get their stories right, 
get all the voices to corroborate on the correct narrative. Some allowed walk in to proclaim or confess most of vets crumbling. Others claim a trek from St. Elizabeth's in Southeast. I try soft talk, engage in storytelling, trying to mind the manic, strike lucid ore and get them up and out before the rubber glove police arrive. Quiet weapons for secret wars, one man told me as he stood at attention in the middle of the aisle between the peace study section and politics and society, yelling about one sperm, one egg, and asking women if they were straight or gay. Sometimes it's hard to be kind, to past and to carry on compassion past the lines of danger and dementia. One woman threatened to cut me with her imaginary knife, and I expected such a bite from a blade because she truly believed she held one in her hand. One manager caught a fist to a jaw and a scratch to a cheek while escorting another woman out of the women's bathroom after customers complained of her aggressive panhandling and not allowing women to leave the bathroom stalls. I worked the nation's capital, ride the trains, walk the streets, see the touched and teetering among the suits, the briefcase, and the fanny packed. I notice how on trains we ache in our attempts not to bump elbows, share stairs, or brush shoulders. The touched, they hold no such reservations. They reach out like I'm sure God does to make sure that there's some sort of realness out there and that once touched, we stay solid and don't waver, don't fade. Right. Gentrification poem, gentrification poem. This is called Duke Ellington's U Street Lament. I try to follow his eyes, see where his stare lands. The Duke watches from an elevated perch now. Not like before, when his face used to be on the ground level. Maybe he just watches over you, me, and all the other faces still left that color the U Street corridor. Or maybe that's a worried look on his wrinkled brow as if he's dreading a gentrified tap on his shoulder, reminding even the Duke that he should fear a rise in rent. So who remembers the uh, U Street, the Duke Ellington, you know, his, his, the, the mural used to be like right there. You could like walk up to it. Now it's like up. It's almost like I look at him every day and he's looking like, yo, I don't know if I'm going to be, where I'm going to be next. They might move me somewhere else. So... Yeah, that's uh, that's that. So, uh, this is for anybody who's ever been in a situation where someone asks them a question, and they're quiet, but there's a whole lot going on in their mind. So, we all got discussions. This is called <clears throat> "In the Car," another two voices poem. So, the high voice will be the lady. Deep voice is gonna be me. So that's how we do. All right, in the car. I'm act like I'm driving. People don't drive like this. With the we'd be all over the road if we did that. All right. Derek, are you single? Yeah. Pregnant silence. So, what about you? Are you single? Yeah, I'm single. Silence as thick as thieves during the blackout. Running ticker tape dialogue in my head. Is she asking because she's interested or is she asking just to ask? Who asked just to ask? What do I say now? Turn up the music? No, 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 no. Turn down the music. Say something. Wait, I haven't said anything yet. Oh, no, I got to say something. Be cool. Be cool. Ice. Cold. Relax, relax. Oh, damn, my lips are going dry. Don't clam up, you chap lip bastard. Say something. Oh, really? Word. That's cool. About, tell, us, tell us a little bit about yourself, because we got about three minutes left. We're going to get as much of you as we can in the two minutes before we roll out. All right. Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, native. North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Charlotte, North Carolina yeah. native, been in D.C. for almost 10 years, okay. came up for graduate school. Um, Ethelbert Miller actually told me this was a good place to uh, be a writer. You met him before you came up here? Uh, I read his, his, his first memoir, um, Fathering Words. And Ethelbert Miller about, is the yeah. Howard... Well, he, he does a lot for Howard, but right. really he's like, for poets, he's really like a conduit for connections. Okay. And a lot of people say, when you get to D.C. as a writer... Talk to him because he can connect you with a lot of people and give you resources and such. So okay. I read his book, emailed him, and said I was coming to D.C. for graduate school. And he was like, all right, when you get up here, find your own community, not just inside of the graduate program, but find your own community. And D.C. has that rich writer's legacy. So I took it from, from him and uh, 
I decided not to come back to Charlotte after. But you, know, you were planning on going program. back to that. I thought about it, but you know, Charlotte, Charlotte, DC, larger DC. city, and it's DC opportunity. Yeah, and just for writers, I met a lot of good people. So been here, poet in residence at Bus Boys and Poets. Right. Uh, I handle a lot of poetry programming. Who's um, the most influential cat for you as far as a poet? Um, I know you worked taught uh, Tony Medina. You were a yeah. student under him for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. He just let me come in and just and, and, and sit, in, sit class. in his class, okay. and that was great. Um, but the most influential poet for me mm-hmm. right now, um, dang, any day you ask me right now, I always say Sonia Sanchez. Sonia Sanchez. Sonia Sanchez, just because her style, she likes haiku. I work with haiku. Okay. And just uh, even po- po- poetic style, she does her thing. So I really like her work. So you got a book coming out. Second book on Busboys and Poets. Uh, Press, yeah. Press, right. Yeah, but first poetry collection. So it's called Wisdom Teeth. Um, it comes out April 5th, 2011. I'm trying to have a big gathering of folks to come through. I'm okay. excited, and I'm also doing a, a trailer for the book. So hopefully okay. it'll debut sometime within the new year on YouTube and other areas. So How long is it going to be? If it's good enough uh, time, we might throw it on one of our shows. Okay, maybe yeah. like two minutes, three minutes, you know. Sounds good. Sounds so good. that's what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about, man. I appreciate you coming out. Yeah, open the gift. Let's see what this is. Okay. Let's see what it is. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, yeah. I've been meaning to start. Yeah, there you go. Damn. I got my cool. Ho, ho, ho. There we go. Um, Right, you gotta have cool. Hey, hey, Derek, can you do me a favor? Can you open ones? I need a square real bad, though. It's been on those rides, man. I need a dude to get me home. Come on, Saturday. What about the kids? Yeah, what about the kids? What about the kids? <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I, guess. I did my job. Now I'm going home. Hey. I'll see you in 356 oh, days, wow. baby. Shows you I don't smoke much. I don't even know how to open the joint. Oh, it's all good. I'll help oh, you out there. Right, so. there you thank you very much. Derek, man, thanks, man. Right. <laughs> you know yeah, thank you. That was yeah, so thanks sweet. Thanks a lot, bud. Appreciate it. That was all so right. sweet. All that right. was so sweet. All right. Oh, oh, you yeah, just watch. Oh, 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 yeah. okay. This has been the, yeah, the, the down, usual huh? the high yeah, There, where can they see more about you? Where can they? Um, where can people? Can, oh yeah, right. Because you, know, you do the poetry set. Yeah, talk yeah. To us. Come by Bus Boys and Poets. I host every first Tuesday um, and every ninth day of the month at the nine on the ninth. That's my monthly poetry set. Um, also, check me out on Facebook, Derek Weston Brown. That's about it. Yeah, because we were um, me and Cruz were at the nine on night last night. Yeah, it was yeah. some good work there, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank I, you. I produced. I mean, our director was there. He was one of the cats. He was in the background, so oh, he came, cool. but he came up. Yeah, it was a good night. Good night. Great stuff. And uh, yeah, we appreciate him for keeping it alive in U Street because there were a lot of poetry spots on like the U Street mm-hmm. corridor, mm-hmm. and a lot of them are gone. But yeah. that's that's one of the one of the hotter ones right now. Oh yeah. Yeah, Definitely. one of the hotter so ones big, right big now. Big shout out to the places that are here and now going Copper House. And you know, not chomping nice Bohemian caverns. Right, not all sorts, all sorts of joints. The original Mocha Hut, way right. up 14th. Yeah, well, no, there oh, was okay. the Mocha Hut right. way up on 14th. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Up so there by the bus depot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, well, um, I think we about to roll out. We could, uh, we how much time are we looking at? A little less than one minute. And um, shoot, I don't think we could smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. People love Sam. I was hurting on this, John. Boy, I couldn't find my dad. I need a square. That's a long oh, no, ride you, back home, man. Back home. You should have got one of them fillies from uh, Chris. Yeah. Ah. Roll, roll but some, she left me. Roll some of them Christmas trees. Ah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> All the way home, baby. All the way home. How, what was your motivation, bro? We got you started. I just want to know real quick, bro. Uh, my dad gave me this book called uh, My Daddy is a Cool Dude when I was like six years old. It's a poetry book. He was trying to get right. Okay. So he gave me that book, and I like poems. So okay. that really was what, what got me started. I like okay. that as a self-promotional okay. piece. My daddy's a cool My dude. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, 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 that's a good yeah. book. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I like that, too. I like that, too. Yeah, yeah. I like that, too. Uh, it, right now, we are counting our bad boy on down. This has been the Hot Talk Presents. Please, let's give it up for Derek Weston Brown, poet of In the House. Thank you so much. And we're out. One for the books. Good job. Thank you.